snow sport for me, it's daunting, it's challenging, it's fearsome. It's a track you have to have a lot of respect for. It's scary at times and definitely a little dangerous at times. Great drivers really shine on the track like most sport. Today, from Bowmanville, Ontario, Canada, it's Speed Vision Cup Round 4 for the stock sports cars on this two-and-a-half-mile road course with 10 turns. A total of 39 cars lined up along the pit lane, representing four different classes. We have two pit reporters today, Greg Creamer and Calvin Fish. Here's Greg. It's at the front of the grid that the Grand Sports Cars reside in the Speed Vision Cup, but in all of the classes here, the story right now is parity and points. In this class, in the Grand Sports Division, even though they've got their second consecutive full, the Mazda team has only a six-point lead. Now, right behind them, on the track and in the points, is the BMW, and not far adrift of that grouping are the Toyotas. Very equal at this stage. Now, as I said, there are a number of classes in Speed Vision Cup competition, and Calvin Fish has a great story developing in the sports class. The story in the sports division is the return of 1997 champ Jeff McMillan. He's going to start from the pole in the 328 BMW. But look out for the number 84. This car is being started by 65-year-old Bob Henderson, and when he finishes his opening stint and turn over to the youngster Todd Lamb, he's then going to jump across the sister car, the number 66, to finish out the session. Now, Greg Creamer has more on the touring class division. In the Turing division, it's even more intense. Five different types of cars are in the top 15 in points. Of course, two drivers per car, that keeps it very jumbled. At this stage, it's Joe Nonamaker and Bill Payton, the Mazdas. They're at the front. However, they have got a huge grouping behind them. We've got Acuras, we've got Hondas, and we have the Paul sitting Nissan. They are all covered within 15 points, the top 10. Let's go back down to Calvin, who's got a great story of a juggernaut in compact. In the compact division, there really has been a juggernaut. Steve Nowicki has won three races in a row, and Rick DeShaw started in Vegas, his rookie race, came away with the victory. They went to Road Atlanta, scored another victory. They're starting from the pole here today, looking for three in a row for one guy and four in a row for the other. Steve Nowicki, a former SCCA rally champion. There's a look at Sylvain Tremblay in the Mazda, car number 70. Let's take a look now at the Toyo Tires track map, a two-and-a-half-mile road course with ten turns. Well, what a phenomenal racetrack it is, Gary. Lots of elevation change, very fast corners, and, of course, that very long uphill straightaway where big horsepower rules, and we were able to go on board with Craig Conway in his Toyota Super Turbo and take a lap with him. Now, here we go, turn one. A little tap on the brakes, fourth gear, turn in, apply the throttle, let the car drift out all the way to the rumble strips. A little bumpy coming off, coming up over the crest here into turn two. Apply the brakes, let the car settle, get down in the ditch in the left, hook the car, a little bit of grip down there, start putting the power on, real fast exit. Coming up into turn three, downshift to third, get it turned in, close to the curb as you can, apply the power, let it drift out, real fast exit here. Let the car come up, fourth gear, coming into turn four, real fast, scary corner, blind. Lift a little bit, back on the power, bumpy on the inside, hard on the brakes now for five, up to down to third, little blip of third, down the, into the, the hairpin, slowest corner of the track, back to second gear, accelerate off, a little bit of wheel spin up to third, up to fourth. And taking fifth right up at the end, end of the Andretti straight. Good place to pass slower cars. Real fast, fastest part of the track. Fifth gear. Okay, coming up to the last turn here. Down to fourth. Let the car settle. Real fast. Back on the power. A little bit of understeer. Maybe a little bit of oversteer coming off. Brake hard down to third. Setting up for the front straight. Brake hard again, down, turn in, rumble strip, back on the power, let it run out to the rumble strip, across the start finish. That's one lap of Mossport. A 
Two hour, 45 minute timed event. Here is your starting lineup on the pole. Joe Vardy uh, teaming with Sylvain Tremblay. Andy Pilgrim will start in car 54. In the second row, it's Craig Conway. You just took a tour of the track with him and John Kohler. In the third row, on the inside, we have Peter Sachs in car number 21 and Ron Johnson in number 63. And moving on to row four, we have Chris Thompson in the Pontiac Firebird. Not a car we've seen a lot of this year. And Jeff McMillan in the first sports car, the 328 IS BMW. Row five is Nick Longy in another 328. And John Norris teamed with Craig Stanton in a Nissan 240 SX. Row six, Joe Nonamaker and Bill Pate in an MX-6 Mazda. Peter Schwartzot with Bob Endicott in an Acura Integra. In the seventh row is Mark Hine and John Green, the prelude with uh, David Shep and Bob Towery in a Mazda. In row eight, John Barrasso with Lance Stewart in an Integra and Jocelyn Hebert in a Talon. Ninth row, Gary Blackman, Greg Lavelle in the Honda Prelude and uh, John Danaher, Bob Henderson in the Supra. Maker and Joe Nonamaker sharing the uh, number 41 touring entry and David Allheim and Jason Potter in the Accord. Levin throws Bob Henderson and Todd Lamb in the Supra. Dick Starita in a Mazda. Row 12 is John Morton, great name in uh, road racing in a Nissan 240SX with Peter Herzog in a RX-7. And of course, row 13 is David Del Genio in an Integra and Bill Nystrom with Ron Pauly in a Toyota Supra. There in the 14th row, Steve Nowicki, who's going for his fourth straight win. He leads in the compact class in the point standings. And as we take a look at the rest of the starting lineup, 39 cars starting this event on a two and a half mile track. Traffic will play a role in the outcome of this event. Well, especially because there are great differences in speed between the fastest cars in this series and the slowest cars. And this is not a particularly wide racetrack and there's many blind corners. So the traffic will be an enormous factor all day long just with the tremendous number of cars on the racetrack. Of course, on the pole, Sylvain Tremblay and Joe Vardy, they teamed up to win at Road Atlanta. Tremblay was also victorious with Nick Ham at Sebring. Uh, Andy Pilgrim and Terry Borcheller victorious at Las Vegas earlier this season back in April in the Grand Sports Class. Well, and of course, the variety here is tremendous. We have turbo cars, we have non-turbo cars, we have heavy cars, we have light cars, we have ha cars that handle well, we have cars that don't handle well, so the variety always creates great racing. The Speed Vision Cup is presented by Toyo Tires. On the road or on the track, Toyo Proxus radials deliver quality second to none for uncompromised performance. Toyo Tires, driven to perform. And brought to you in part by Toyota. Every day belongs to you. Make it count. Toyota, every day. Gary Lee along with Jeremy Dale, Calvin Fish, and Greg Creamer ready for a two-hour and 45-minute timed event for the Speed Vision Cup for the stock sports cars. The pace car off track. Come up through the gears, a slow start down the front straightaway. Well, Gary, that's a bit of an understatement. This is a very slow start, and that might as well have been a standing start. And, of course, the Mazda has an advantage on horsepower, but it looks like the BMW is alongside as they go side by side through turn one. And a great onboard shot there from Joe Vardy as the BMW takes the lead. Joe Vardy starting the car owned by Sylvain Tremblay. Andy Pilgrim, Terry Porcheller car. Now the BMW M3 has the early lead. On board with Craig Conway, who gave us those great shots on the track description earlier as we go inside the cockpit with Craig. I think the BMW leading early here is significant. That car should handle better around Mosport here. Won't have the power to get up the straightaway, but look at this little lead he's already built up just through three corners. This is the fourth stop out of six races this season. They'll go on to Sebring and in Road Atlanta. However, the last races have been won by either the lead car or the car that's winning second right now. So the Mazda or the BMW won the races this season. The Mazda taking two, the BMW taking one. And I want to tell you, I'm one, on board one of these small Hondas, this straightaway and this hill feels like you're climbing a mountain. Inside the Miata, they're behind that car of Steve Nowicki, who's won the last three classes. And you can see there the Mazda, the BMW had a good lead coming out of the main straightaway, and the Mazda has really closed up as we take a look at one of the Mustangs in the field. 
probably see this seesaw for the for the opening laps here as the BMW will be able to stretch it out on the parts of the racetrack where handling is important and the more powerful cars will close up on that big long uphill climb the Andretti straightaway. Mustangs you were looking at that uh, blue and orange Cobra Peter Sachs and Chuck Snipes won't take long on this two and a half mile road course with this many cars to see the lapping begin. Once again, as we've talked so often in this division, it's a case of, oh, a car off the track. That is the Jordan Fox entry, number 94. Oh. Joe Fox on board, and he's going nowhere. No, that is a bad sign. That car is buried in the gravel trap. And again, we see about four car lengths there between our top two cars. And a pretty good, a pretty good uh, spread here now amongst the top five cars. As we look at the battle in the sports division, the two BMWs come down into turn five. So a very tight battle. These BMW 328s have been dominant in the sports class this past year or so. Continue to be. So that Miata mired in the gravel, but that is a safety factor that really keeps the race cars off a concrete wall or off a tire barrier. It mires the cars down, they can't go anywhere, but it certainly uh, prevents greater damage. Well, we'll keep an eye on that Mazda. That may bring out a full course yellow. In the meantime, Joe Vardy has closed up just a little bit on the leader, Andy Pilgrim. And I believe uh, Calvin Fish is in pit lane and uh, has a little bit of insight on pit lane speed limits for us. The pit lane here at Mosport Park is very tight. It's going to create a problem if we're under yellow and all the teams come in together. Also, there's a 25 mile an hour speed limit. We have a radar gun set up here, so as any car comes into pit lane, the officials watch this monitor here very carefully to see if any of the drivers are running over 25 miles an hour. The problem's going to happen is if under yellow we have a couple of cars on the same team running very closely for the lead, the team then has to decide which car's going to come in. So it obviously offsets one car's ability to win the race. So I'll begin interesting to see if that becomes a factor as time progresses. You know, Jeremy, that's an inherent problem with older racetracks is the size of the pit lane and how narrow they are. And look at this, back on board with Joe Vardy. We talked about the horsepower up the straightaway, and Joe Vardy, he can get alongside, but he can't get by, and of course, there are safety vehicles there, so there's a yellow flag out. Vardy will have seen that yellow flag, and he knows he has to back off because he's not permitted to pass under yellow. So that's probably the best shot he's had so far in the early going of this race to get to the front and take the lead, but not able to do it because of that yellow flag. That's a local yellow up at turn eight. So they've elected not to go full course yellow. They'll use a local yellow to pull that car out of the gravel pit. Earlier we talked about the heavy traffic and, and watching the mirrors, which plays into our old spy storyline. Here's a report that Calvin recorded earlier. The Old Spice storyline today in the Speed Vision Cup is the fact that the overall winner will probably be the driver who best manages brakes, tires, and fuel efficiency. But in the compact class, it'll probably be the driver who best manages these, the mirrors. Because whilst most drivers can just look forward, these guys also have to look behind them. With four different classes racing here today on the ultra-fast Mosport Park, speed differential down the back straightaway can sometimes reach 25 miles an hour. Christian Elder is the driver of the number 23 Mazda Miata. Now, Christian, how does this affect your strategy when you get in the heat of the battle? I'd say it's just part of racing here at Mossport. Uh, the faster cars are much faster down the straightaways. They're about the same speed through a lot of the corners, so you don't have to worry about that quite as much. But they come up on you fast and extremely furious, so you've got to be ready. Um, you don't really have to jump out of the way. If you maintain your line and run a good, strong run line, they'll find their way around you. At the other end of the spectrum, the grand sports drivers sometimes have to deal with race situations which resemble rush hour traffic. Now, Randy Popes is the driver of the number seven Toyota Super Turbo, and Randy, sometimes it gets fast and furious out there. The Super Turbo has got a tremendous advantage in straight line speed on cars like the Mazda Miata, and yet not in the corners. The, the little cars are quick in the corners. So we've got to weave our way past these little blurs in the road at the end of the Mario Andretti straight. Okay, well, whilst these grand sports drivers probably don't use their mirrors for traffic, they probably use them to look good on the podium afterwards. Well, back to the racing, and again, it's a BMW out in front. Andy Pilgrim going for the incredible record of 113 consecutive finishes in all kinds of sports car racing with all kinds of team drivers. That is just a remarkable record. Right now, uh, he's being chased by Joe Vardy. 
a bit surprised that right now the BMW this early is leading Vardy in that turbo? Well, my, my feeling was if the BMW could get the lead early on, it could stay in the lead. And uh, my feeling was also the same about the RX-7, that if whichever one of these cars were to jump out in the lead, as you see a waving yellow flag exiting turn five there, and there is the reason one of the uh, slower compact cars pulled over to the side on the straightaway. My feeling was whichever one of these cars jumped out in the lead would stay there. And he, now Vardy's got that good run going again. And this is where, this is where it's right at the crest of the hill. He's now actually got inside and he's going to be able to get that lead away from Andy Pilgrim. And I'm surprised Andy Pilgrim left that door open for him, but he did. So now Joe Vardy up front in the lead in that RX-7. Well, the dilemma for Joe Vardy is to run and be competitive, hopefully at the front, but yet conserve fuel because this Mazda really sucks the fuel. So fuel economy has always been a problem for car number 70. Right now, Joe Vardy leads over Andy Pilgrim, Craig Conway, John Kohler, and Ron Johnson. Coming right back with more of the Speed Vision Cup. for the lead and a lead change as we come back here in the Speed Vision Cup and Andy Pilgrim goes around the Mazda to reappropriate the top spot. With a very solid move over the crest of turn two and that is a big move to make in any type of race car a pass going into turn two here at most port. If you haven't driven this racetrack that might not make as much sense as if you had and there's the Peter Sachs number 21 Grand Sports Mustang in the pit lane. Early problem, the hood is up, and we'll send uh, Calvin Fish down there to see if he can find out what the problem might be with that Mustang Cobra. We have an unscheduled pit stop for the number 21 Ford Mustang, Peter Sachs behind the wheel. He has an intermittent misfire. They brought it in. They tried to adjust the timing of the engine. Doesn't seem like they're fixed it, but they're going to send him out. Obviously, under green flag racing, this is costing the team a lot of time. There's the 24 Miata of Andy Linder parked alongside the road in a very precarious position that far off the racing line. No, and it looks like Craig Conway. Oh, we have a problem here. This is turn eight at the end of the main straightaway. Well, Genio off course. And that's right gravel. here. That's the top of the straightaway. That's the gravel pit. There's the car right there. The gravel's supposed to stop the car before it gets to that tire barrier. Well, uh, he is getting out of the car, so apparently he is okay. But he's cleared the gravel trap, which tells me that he probably didn't drive. No, Whoa, he, didn't drive. he got upside down. He barrel rolled the thing. What an impact. You can see the uh, cushioning of the tires, but he got into the gravel and actually tossed the car over side for side, did a barrel roll. Well, let's go back to the pit lane and check in with our other pit reporter. Greg Creamer. Well, that huge battle up front, Sylvain Tremblay, your co-driver, the guy who put it on pole in the number 70 Mazda, is uh, in the middle of a huge battle right now. Is it fun to watch or is it a little nerve-wracking? Or is it nerve-wracking? Once you're in the car, you're just so involved in the battle, and the caliber of drivers is so good that you're not really worried about crashing. It's more happened, you know, the battle. But sitting here in the pits, there's not much I can do but twiddle my thumbs and hope everything goes okay. And of course, that is his car, Speed Source, his company out of Florida. Gas cap was the flap was open there on the left side. Well, they probably just let that flap run open. Now this is where Vardy always gets the advantage. Look at him closing up here on this big climb. This is all about horsepower. This is the Andretti straight. Now they're coming up to where that car was flipped over. Vardy goes around the outside. We saw Pilgrim let him go up the inside. And so Vardy now, Vardy now goes back to the lead. So for the second time this afternoon, Joe Vardy has the lead. And I'm surprised they're not covering this with some type of ye yellow flag. We've got safety workers out there. You've got a car over the gravel pit that is very surprising. Once again, down the front straight away, another lap being completed. However, it's not important how many laps they complete. It's a two hour and 45 minute timed event. Anticipate seeing these guys swap the leads back and forth a number of times this afternoon. Well, look at what they're coming up on. They're coming up on a bunch of slower compact cars, and that's going to be very, very significant. As we go back and look at our touring class leader, John Norris in the 07 Nissan 240. These battles exist all the way through this field. And all afternoon, you'll see these battles all down through the field, not just at the front, but in the middle and at the back of the pack in all these different classes. Look at this gaggle of cars that our leaders are into. Yeah, so once again, look at the brake smoke. 
Chase is on board with Joe Farty. As, now, these guys are racing. These guys are racing. That Toyota Super Turbo looks like it should be going a lot quicker than that little Nissan Sentra. But nevertheless, these guys are all trying to race. And this has allowed Craig Conway to close up on this battle for the lead. So the top three cars now all very close. And look at Conway gesturing to those slower cars to move over. Flashes headlamps at him. But once again, the problem is with the difference in top end speed, these guys are battling for position in the compact of the touring class. And at the same time, they have to be aware, as we indicated from that feature earlier with Calvin Fish, use the mirrors, be aware of what's coming up behind you. So now this leaves Pilgrim in a precarious position because he's being held up by Vardy, and now he's coming under pressure from Conway. He needs to get around Vardy. There's a good battle up in front that has been joined now by that uh, Conway car as Joe Vardy leads over Andy Pilgrim, Craig Conway, John Kohler, and Ron Johnson. Welcome back to the Speed Vision Cup Round 4. I'm Gary Lee. Alongside is Jeremy Dale covering the pits, Calvin Fish, and Greg Kramer. And once again, status quo up in front. Andy Pilgrim in the BMW continues to lead the Mazda of Joe Vardy. And I'm just so impressed with the quality of these four very different cars as we go on board with Conway in that Toyota. And this is a replay of Andy Pilgrim going back under Joe Vardy. And there it is in turn two. And Pilgrim is making that his move. And look at this small lead that he has been able to stretch out now. He's got a couple laps in front, but Joe Vardy always able to close that up, up this long back straight. Well, that's his biggest lead of the afternoon right there. But closing down quickly. But as I was saying, I'm so impressed with the quality of these cars out front. Four very different cars all running within about three seconds up front. And also, for the most part, what we've been able to see, other cars that touring the compacts are giving the Grand Sport cars a chance to race. Absolutely, they are. As we go back in the back, and again, this is that race. Oh, that is the team car to Vardy. That is not Joe Vardy. That's the 71 car, David Shep. And he has been off at turn five and has picked up a banner of some kind that may end up on the racetrack. And look at that, that left front fender has been folded up, so he's definitely impacted the tires with the left side of that car. Definite, oh, I was going to say that's definite black flag material until you drop it, but now it's there for someone else to pick up, and that's definitely not good. Well, let's see if he heads back to the pit to have some attention at the left front. As you see some of the uh, cars in the other classes, four classes here this afternoon, putting on cars, began this race two hours and 45 minutes of time event. And this is that touring battle that we were looking at earlier. Very tight at the front of the touring class. We have the Nissan, the Mazda, and the Acura. Again, three very different cars and all very evenly matched. The Nissan now pulling out a bit of a lead on the 43 of Nanamaker and Schwarzkopf. A good battle back in the uh, compact class for fourth position. Zero four of Mike Speakman is now fourth, and Joe Jordan, number 93, is running fifth in the compact class. We saw Jordan off the track earlier, so he's uh, back in contention. And these guys do race hard, even though they're back in the pack. And a very different driving style that goes along with driving these very low displacement cars. It's all about maintaining speed. You don't have a lot of horsepower to make up for mistakes, so you have to drive mistake-free if you're going to go fast in these low horsepower cars. 57 cars actually running the 11th in the touring class, so he's right in the middle of that battle for fourth position in compact. And that is uh, inherent with this type of competition when you have four different classes racing all Whoa, together. Oh, that's not where you want to go. The outside of turn two is not where you want to try and make a move. And we're three, three wide. Three wide into turn three. And the number 93 Miata comes up the inside and takes that position away as we go back up front. And let's go back to the pit lane and Greg Kramer. Well, Terry Borschley, you'll be taking over the number 54 BMW uh, at the uh, driver change, but your co-driver right now, Andy Pilgrim, is just flogging that car, and, and there's a reason for that, I take it. Yeah, he's doing a great job. We're trying to build a little bit of a margin over the Mazda. The Mazda's going to be quick at the end, and, and we know that from Atlanta. Uh, but Andy will bring the car back in good shape, even though he's pushing it hard. He'll keep it off the curbs, and he'll bring it in good. Is this 
a situation where we're seeing turbo power on the long straight here at Mosport uh, might play the difference, you think? Yeah, absolutely. Not just the straightaway, but the hills. Uh, the BMW is a great car. The thing's handling fantastic. We couldn't ask it to, to handle any better through the corners. Uh, but on power, they got us a little bit with the turbo. And that's the same problem we're facing with the Supras, but it's a little closer. Those cars are a little heavier. The Mazdas are pretty light. Good brakes. Not much wrong with that car. All those cars have been swapping the lead back and forth, but for right now, Andy Pilgrim shows the way over Barty, Conway, Kohler, and Johnson. We're coming back with more of the Speed Vision Cup. Round four of the Speed Vision Cup with six races to be contested this season, and right now it looks like the leader might be held up just a bit. Well, he comes down through turn four and into turn five. He definitely is getting held up. Now, they've been working traffic all afternoon. But this is really going to hurt Andy Pilgrim because that turn five area, 5A and 5B, he's been much quicker than Joe Vardy. And now Joe Vardy's got a big run on him going up the hill here. Look at that hill. Just phenomenal amount of horsepower required to get you up that hill. And that Mustang's no slouch. And Vardy threads the needle there as they approach the crest of the hill. And he actually has to get off the throttle and into the brake pedal before the crest of the hill. And Pilgrim is able to maintain that lead. But that was a close one for Andy Pilgrim. Not able to stretch that lead out the way Terry Borcheller had mentioned in our last segment. But another example of how traffic can play into the lap time if you catch them at the wrong spot. Absolutely. It's very critical that you catch them at the right spot. And that's not always skill. Sometimes that's just a bit of luck. But uh, a lot of it is skill. And that's why guys like Joe Vardy have won so many of these races because they've been around a long time and they've seen all these things before. Look at this. A battle back in the sports class being held up by ground sports car. Yeah, these leaders in the sports class, the two BMWs being held up by that Firebird. And you'll want to get around. Sometimes you get the quicker cars that are not running quite as quick as the cars in their class, and they fall back into the clutches of the other classes. And that's a classic case of what we have here. That is a grand sports Firebird racing with a couple of sports class BMW 328s. We call this a sports stock sports division truly is a stock sports car with the safety elements plus stock tires. Really, just, just modifications for safety, such as roll bars, uh, you know, uh, fire extinguishers, very good seat belts. I mean, you're allowed to lower the car a little bit. You're, you're allowed to do very minor modifications to the car, but really, these are street cars out of the show. And for the money involved, a cost-efficient racing series. Especially when you consider the contingencies involved from some of the manufacturers. Uh, Honda over the years has been very involved from a contingency program, as has BMW. Uh, General Motors was with these Firebirds, but uh, not so much anymore. So uh, great contingency programs from manufacturers and parts suppliers and so on uh, in the automotive business. You caught a glimpse of that red and yellow car there, Rick Dishow, who is now second position in the compact class. In fact, he is going for his third straight win here this afternoon. There he is right there in that yellow car, the red car with the yellow stripe. This is up into turn three, and I see a little I see bit some of dust. Oh, he has spun. He spun right in front of the leaders and gets back on the racetrack and apparently will not lose that second place position. That was a, a hard stopper right in front of the overall leaders. Well, not only that, but uh, pretty harmless. You know, it's very difficult at a racetrack like Mosport to have what I refer to as a harmless uh, off, and that was pretty harmless. Couldn't get much uh, better than that in terms of going off the road at Mosport because this is such a fast racetrack as if we go on board with Vardy, and he's going to get pinched up behind uh, Pilgrim here. And Pilgrim now pulling to the inside to defend that line. And this is as early as we've seen Joe Vardy go by Pilgrim yet. Top of the hill has the pass made. New leader, Joe Vardy, for the third time this afternoon. So the lead has been swapped between these two cars, the BMW and the Mazda. So Joe Vardy, who has won 24 times in this stock competition, is back out in front. Porcheller in the pit lane watching Andy Pilgrim there in the BMW as Joe Vardy leads it over Andy Pilgrim. Craig Conway is still third. Kohler is still fourth. Johnson is still fifth. On lap 
23 of a two hour and 45 minute timed event. Joe Vardy continues to lead with about a car length advantage now over Andy Pilgrim. It's been seesaw throughout the early stages of this race. And a big slide by Vardy there leaving turn three. And sure enough, around comes Andy Pilgrim. I think Vardy's probably been running those rear tires very hard to try and stay with and get by Andy Pilgrim. And he did that leaving turn three, and that really cost him exit speed, and Pilgrim went by. You heard Pilgrim's teammate, Terry Borchiller, say, we want Andy to get a big lead. That has not been possible. No, it's not been possible because they've been in a lot of traffic. Here's a classic situation here. As they go up the back straightaway, Pilgrim gets balked by one of the, I mean, I say slower, but now Vardy gets balked. He actually gets pushed off the road. Look at that, these two mixing it up with these slower cars. First Pilgrim gets blocked, then Vardy gets pushed off the road, and now Vardy having to throw it inside turn nine on one of the slower cars. And now he, for just a moment there, he's got a car between him and Pilgrim, but this is the biggest lead we've seen Vardy have thus far. That many laps ago was the biggest lead that we had seen for the 54 BMW, for Andy Pilgrim lap car between the two leaders. Sometimes it's just a matter of looking ahead and picking the right spot on the racetrack when you get that heavy traffic. Well, it's very difficult to time that. It's very difficult to anticipate. Here's a classic situation. Andy Pilgrim needs to make his best guess as to which way that car is going to go as he makes his move, and that all works out, but sometimes it doesn't. He makes his way around the BMW, tries to close in again on the Mazda of Joe Vardy. Vardy actually moved from his Tampa, Florida home up to North Carolina to be involved with NASCAR stock car racing. Didn't drive for a while, took a sabbatical from driving. He's been driving on and off for a long, long time and uh, has always been very talented on many, many races in sports car competition probably make a more lucrative living racing NASCAR, but uh, has certainly been very successful in this type of racing. He's won only once this season. He teamed with Sylvain Tremblay at Road Atlanta back on June 20th. He's won 24 of these events overall during his career. What a remarkable record that Andy Pilgrim has. 100, he's going for 113 consecutive finishes. Now just think about how remarkable that is. Well, and a lot of it in races like this. Whoa, we've got a BMW at the exit of turn three with a with a big slide on the exit and a big hit. Bob Mazzacola. That could bring out that full course yellow we talked about earlier. That car is in a very precarious place. The leader's now just coming up on that area that you saw a standing yellow flag at the apex of two there, and now this is Pilgrim. He sticks his nose in, but probably sees the yellow flag. There you saw it very briefly. And this car just at the exit of turn three right here. So there it is. And that, that I'm sure, will have to bring out a full course yellow because that car is a very precarious play. Well, Bob climbs out. He is OK, but some very serious damage as he back into that tire wall, actually the concrete wall down there. And this is probably pretty good timing. If we do get a full course yellow, it's probably good timing to start topping up some fuel for some of these teams. So it'll be interesting to see what happens on pit road if we do get that full course yellow that we do anticipate. Well, we are within the pit window for some of these uh, gas guzzlers. Of course, the crew would much prefer to be able to make the pit stop under a full course yellow. We'll anticipate one, but yet at this point, not seen the pace car come out. Watch for the yellow flag at the start finish line. Signal flag. There it is. There it is. So yes, indeed, we are under a full course yellow. So there is the pace car. Joe Vardy under yellow will lead Andy Pilgrim, Greg Conway. Top five remain the same. And back with more of the Speed Vision Cup. Under a full course yellow, your leader is in the pit lane, Joe Vardy in the uh, speed source Mazda. Set number 70 to the attention of the pit crew. Should be a driver change. Let's go down to Greg Creamer. In 
the number 70 Mazda leading at the time of the full rush yellow is ducked into the pits as the 54 continued on track. No pit stop. Are they getting out under the yellow? They're going to take the opportunity with the reduced pace to do the driver change. They're going to top off the fuel. We are right about the 45 minute mark, which means they ought to be able to do this with a little help here on one more stop. They wanted to get at least to that moniker. Now with it being yellow, they get a little help in the fuel department. They're not changing tires. They like the tires. Joe's been able to use the power of the Mazda to good effect and not scooch the tires too much. They are done with the fuel and just that fast. Still main trunk way behind the wheel is out. With all the action in the pit lane, let's go up pit lane to Calvin Fish. Number 88 is in. Eric Van Cleef now getting in behind the wheel, taking over from Craig Conway. Eric's a very fast driver. He's very used to this type of car. Had a lot of success with the regular Toyota Super and has uh, moved up a division with this turbo and uh, qualified on the pole a lot of times last year. Very fast. And with this uh, stop under caution, he'll have good track position, a full load of fuel. But it looks like these guys will have to do another stop so they can only go about one hour on a full fuel load. So all these teams making their stop under yellow making a driver's change. And I'm a little surprised that we haven't seen this car stop because when that yellow flag comes out, your best opportunity is to duck in early. You can see that right now, he's got good track position. There's Pilgrim as Van Cleef comes out of the pit lane in fifth position, actually just in time as that pace car is in the last corner. And now Pilgrim pits, which is very peculiar strategy. So he actually, in your mind, pitted a lap late. I think he should have definitely pitted the lap earlier. It would have been the, the best thing to do in terms of track position because now Vardy is going to get in front of him. 25 mile per hour pit speed limit. Let's go down to pit lane and Greg Creamer. The number 54 Masari Mueller BMW is in and it looks as though Andy Pilgrim is going to stay on. They are not going to do a driver's change, a little different strategy. And they are going to go apparently well, maybe not. They're not going to do tires. They're just jacking the car up so they can get as much fuel as possible into the tank. By tilting it over, it gets a little bit better flow, allows them to get more fuel into the tank. Pilgrim is going to stay on board. They're checking pressures and the like on the tires, but apparently they like the wear. Not a concern. They changed the pressure on the right front tire, trying to just tweak the handling just a little bit on this machine. And interestingly, guys, they missed the pit stop. They, they said, had we to do it over again, we would have brought them in right away along with the number 70 car. Problem was, it kind of caught them by surprise when the yellow came out. 70 ducked in and caught them by surprise. And the hood is going up, but I don't think it's anything serious. They were discussing what they were going to do. Just a quick change. Uh, making Now they're also making a little handling change. They needed to get the car dropped down to level it out. They're changing the shock setting, they're going a little stiffer or a little softer but they're making a little handling change. Even in showroom stock racing, it's pretty advanced. Good stop, considering all the adjustments made, cars out. Well, so they admit they made a mistake, and that's pretty clear, but I'm surprised that, that they said they were surprised by the yellow, because both those cars came under the start-finish sign when the full-course yellow came out. So that should not have been a surprise, but that is the uh, luxury of the, uh, the full-course yellow, is that you can make shock changes and tire pressure changes to improve the handling during a full-course caution. Once again, we would anticipate one more stop for many of the guys in the GS and the S, or the sports class. Uh, some of these uh, Touring Compact cars could go the distance on only one stop. After a full course yellow, the leaders have been scrambled back into the pack, but let's take this opportunity to go back to the pit lane and Calvin Fish. The leaders in the touring division, the number 40 and the number 07 car driven by John Norris are in under pit stop, under yellow flag. Obviously, they're trying to take advantage of the situation right now. They're literally side by side in the pit lane. It looks like the accurate pit stop is all done other than fuel. Looks like the driver change is now complete. It's going to be Craig stand behind the wheel. He's ready to go. And in fact, they are going to just beat these other guys out. So they will take the lead in class. But it was very close. Pit lane is so congested, they had to push the car back to give them room to actually pull out. Well, that pit lane is not only uh, very narrow, it's not very long. So many of these teams that have two cars entered are actually having to share a pit box, so they can't stop on the same lap. Ron Johnson had been in fifth position before this full course yellow and his pit stop for the BMW M3s. 
narrow that pit lane is there. 25 mile per hour pit speed limit. And that can be very difficult for a driver to adhere to. And he's been out there racing. And the adrenaline's flowing. And he pulls in and has to really just slow down to a crawl. Well, I'll tell you, 25 miles an hour is almost nothing. If you uh, watch, uh, you know, a NASCAR Winston Cup race or a, a CART FedEx championship race, and they have a 50 or 60 mile an hour speed limit, that looks slow. But look at how slow this looks. Well, let's go back to the pit lane, Greg. The class leading number 81 BMW leading in sports makes its way into the pit lane. This is on the wave by. This is strategy. They want to get around the pace car, then stop because then they can run very quickly to try and get back and around. Oh, a little problem is the team car number 28 running second in class ducks in behind them. And there's no room because we've got a traffic jam down in pit lane. We have the number 43 Mazda, one of the front runners in touring is in. Their team car, number 41 as well. Quick driver change though for the number 81 machine, the leading sports machine, the BMW. The driver's change is done. Helpful for them is the fact that the refueling goes on in the right side of the car so they can move it right up by the pit wall, get it done. The number 28 car, they're, they've, well, it helped them, too, because of the fact that their right side refueling, they were able to get the hose there. The number 81 car is done, and they're waving him out, telling him to go. He's on his way. They can finish up. Hey, they got lucky with the number 28 machine, but we uh, it's a literal traffic jam down here. Both of the Mazdas are jammed in right now back there. The number 43 is down, but I don't know that it's going to be able to move. They're trying to finish up the driver change on the 28 Franz Blom Racing BMW. Came in second in sport. Now they're just trying to move the car forward. Give the number 43 Mazda Bill Pate now behind the wheel. He's out. The number 20 is out. Boy, when that wave by happened, it all happened in a big hurry. So I'm wondering if uh, Don Panos has any uh, plans to expand the pit lane here. Well, I can bet you that all these guys are going to be lobbying right after the race to widen that pit lane. So we'll take this break and come back with more of the Speed Vision Round 4 from Mossport Park. Remain under yellow as the pace car remains out in front of the field as we take a look at the Toyota race recap. Lap 35 complete now of a two hour and 45 minute timed event. So this full course yellow has given most of the teams a chance to make their pit stop. For the leaders, the first of what should be two pit stops here this afternoon. Your strategy from some of the teams as we see the pace car now pulling off into pit lane. Lights are out, so we will go green. Looks like Sylvain Tremblay, as the green flag flies, will have the advantage again in car number 70. Remember, he came in right away, or I should say his team driver, Joe Vardy, came in at the top of that yellow, and the crew for Borcheller and Pilgrim admitted they made a mistake. They came in a lap too late. They definitely made a mistake, and they got caught out on that. Look at what that has cost them in terms of track position, and that's going to be very, very difficult to make up that track position. Well, not only track position, but your leader right now has nothing in front of him but clear racetrack. Oh, exactly. And I, second place is back there mired in traffic. That's the thing. Tromblay can settle in now. Now, keep in mind, he's just gotten into the car, so he's gonna need, going to need to settle in in this race car. Pilgrim did not get out of that M3, so Pilgrim is already up to speed and very comfortable, but he's got to get through that traffic, and that's going to cost him a lot of time. So by some good pit work, good pit strategy, Number 70, Mazda, remains out in front, which looks way back into the crowd of cars to find that number 54. There's Van Cleef, number 88. Once again, Joe Vardy turned that Mazda over to Tremblay in the lead under the yellow. Mazda remains out in front. Look at this gaggle of cars on the back straightaway. Oh, a car off into the guardrail. That is number 71. That is the team car of the car we've been talking about, that Barty Tremblay entry. Well, and that is not that far from where he uh, picked up that banner earlier on in the race when he went off at turn five. So a lot of uh, action for the 71 car on the back straightaway. Let's go back to the pit lane. Well, we're standing by with Jim Bell, who's team manager for the, I'm sorry, Mueller BMW team. And it looked like, Jim, you guys gave up a little track position to, uh, to make a handling adjustment on the car. You're in a pitch battle. What's going on? 
Yeah, we're doing the best we can. We know it's going to be kind of a late game kind of show. So we had a little understeer. Haven't had a lot of time to really get the chassis sorted out in the dry weather this weekend with all the rain and so forth. So we did. We took the time to make the chassis adjustment, hoping it'll give us a little more at the end. And to underscore that, this track is different from what these guys have been practicing on, qualifying on, because we had rain throughout the weekend. Yeah, it rained Thursday, which was a practice day, as uh, now Pilgrim with a very aggressive move down into turn five on Van Cleef. It rained on Friday, so they have not had a lot of uh, dry racetrack time, and that's critical. And the racetrack is very green. There's not a lot of rubber on the racetrack. It's very, very clean. And then this is a move. This is a replay of the move by Pilgrim to take away second position from Eric Van Cleef down into turn five, Moss Corner. So that is the battle for second. The 54 car now in second position. The Super is now third. And together they can hook up and if they can't chase down that leading number 70 Mazda. Sometimes when two guys are battling for position, it allows the leader to enhance his lead even more. Oh, absolutely. If these guys start swapping this position back and forth, that's going to play into Tremblay's hands. Uh, once again, the Mazda is leading the BMW. Eric Van Cleef in the Supra is now third. Ron Johnson has moved to fourth, and Gary Smith now is in fifth position.